I'm so pleased to join you today for the Global Digital Inclusion Challenge. What a wonderful event, and I hope you're all enjoying the challenge and the collaborations you're having. I'd like to share a little bit of my story and to explain how my plan A fell through and why I'm so glad that it did. First, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Karen Mossman, and I'm a research scientist at McMaster University, which is located in Ontario, Canada, about one hour southwest of Toronto. I've run my own lab here for almost 20 years. My lab studies viruses, and working with colleagues in Toronto, we were the first group to isolate SARS-CoV-2 from COVID-19 patients in Toronto and to share this virus with research labs across the country. Thus, I now have a front row seat to understanding how this virus works and why it causes the symptoms that it does in patients. I'm also the Vice President Research at McMaster University, which is Canada's most research intensive university and one of the top 75 universities in the world. As Vice President Research, I oversee all aspects of research at the university and work with students, researchers, staff, industry and government to support and grow all of the research at McMaster. This position has taken me around the world and allowed me to interact with some really interesting people. As the head of, of research at Canada's most research intensive university and as someone who studies viruses and helped isolate SARS-CoV-2 for research and researchers in Canada, the COVID pandemic has really confirmed to me that what I thought of as a failure so many years ago was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason and that success depends on both hard work, but also a lot on luck and chance. You've all heard the expression, when one door closes, another door opens. It might take a while, but it will open. You have to have the courage and the faith to walk through when it does. So here's my story. All my life, I wanted to be a vet. I don't recall ever wanting to do anything else. Everything I did growing up had that one singular goal and focus, and that was to become a vet. I took math and science at high school, even though I found other subjects really interesting. Even though I had high marks and could have gone to really any university in Canada, I only applied to one, the University of Guelph. I put all of my eggs in one basket. Why? That's the home of the Ontario Veterinarian College. Now at the time you had to have at least two years of undergraduate education to apply to vet college. During this time, I took all math and science courses thinking this would better position me to get into vet college. I was also really lucky to be able to volunteer at the vet college working in the large animal clinic. I had to have my three rabies vaccine shots, but from day one, I was able to work directly with animals, mostly horses. So you're probably thinking, how is this a failure? It was a failure in that I hated it. I loved animals, but I hated working with them, especially in that context. The more I volunteered there, the more I realized I did not want to be a vet. At the time, this felt like a huge failure. All my life I'd had one singular goal and I was failing at it. There was never a plan B. I was devastated to realize that everything I had worked towards was falling apart. And everyone that I thought was depending on me to follow this path, I thought I was disappointing them. So here's where I learned the first three of some important life lessons. Number one, everything happens for a reason. I am a firm believer of that. Number two, when one door closes, another door opens. And number three, follow your passion. This is probably the biggest life lesson and, and one that I really want you to, um, to take away from this. You really have to follow your passion. So while I didn't like working in the vet clinic, I loved my lab courses. The program I was in at the time was really challenging. 
Since I had chosen a science heavy program, almost every course I took had both three hours of lectures and three hour of labs in a week. What was unexpected was that I loved the labs. In my final undergraduate year, I did a thesis project where I worked in a research lab and this lab happened to work on viruses. I spent many, many more hours in the lab than I had to, but I loved it. It was like my second home. I loved everything about research, learning something new, discovering new things that maybe nobody else has discovered yet, being able to ask interesting questions and having to really be creative to figure out how to answer those questions. So here's where a new door opened for me. My thesis supervisor introduced me to a colleague of his, at the time one of Canada's or probably Canada's best known virologist and a world expert on pox viruses. So when I was done my undergraduate degree, I left my comfort zone and moved across the country to do my PhD to follow my passion. This is where I learned life lesson number four, step outside your comfort zone. It's how you learn and it's how you grow. After my PhD, I stayed researching viruses and finished my postdoctoral fellowship. During this time, I got married and I had two kids. Here's where I had to step outside of my comfort zone yet again. As I was finishing my postdoctoral fellowship, my PhD supervisor called me up and said, there are job openings at three universities across the country. And he told them all that I was going to apply. At the time, I had not even considered applying for a faculty job. I didn't have the confidence that I was good enough, and I didn't think I could have both a career and a family. At the time, I had almost all male professors, and the few female professors I had were either single or did not have children. So I had no role models to look up to. Here's where I learned life lesson number five. Have faith in your abilities and be willing to lead the way, even if it means you fail. You won't know what you're capable of unless you try. I took the leap of faith and landed at McMaster University. Over the course of my career, there were a lot of firsts. I was the first female faculty member within the group I was hired into. Many years later, I became the first female chair of the Department of Biochemistry and Biomedical Sciences, one of the premier research departments at McMaster University. Now, in the middle of a pandemic, I have the opportunity to really make a difference, both with the research that my lab is doing on SARS-CoV-2, but also in overseeing the entire research portfolio at the university. Just by participating in this Global Digital Inclusion Challenge, you are following a passion. You are working as a team, which is really important. One thing I've learned over the course of my career is that diversity really and truly does drive excellence and that collaborating and working together is essential. You can't solve a complex problem without a complex solution. And fully understanding diverse viewpoints and experiences is really critical. Embracing diversity and learning from, from people that have very different experiences than you really allows you to grow and to learn and to succeed. So what advice can I give you? Follow your passion. First and foremost, follow your passion. Don't do what you think you should do or what you think others think you should do. Follow your passion. Get out of your comfort zone. It was really hard for me. There were many times I almost didn't do something because I was really uncomfortable in doing it, but I'm so glad I got out of my comfort zone. Don't be afraid to fail. It's not a failure. Even though many times I thought I failed, I realized, okay, maybe I didn't succeed, but that failure and learning from that allowed me to do something I never would have done otherwise. Have faith in yourself. You don't know what you're capable of unless you try. Everyone has something important to offer. 
regardless of your background, your education, your life experiences. Don't diminish what you think you haven't done because you've probably done a lot. Don't be afraid to ask for help and be willing to help others. Recognize that we are stronger together than we are individually. Science is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. Even though you hear about um, you know, publish your parish or getting scooped. Science really is a team sport. One of the best outcomes, I think, of this COVID pandemic has been how the science community has responded and how they've really come together because this is a, a global pandemic. It's affecting everybody. What we've seen in the science community is open sharing of data, greater collaboration, formation of many different platforms to facilitate people coming together, to share ideas and to conquer um, really complex issues. I really hope that all of these issues continue well beyond this pandemic. I have complete faith in each and every one of you that you have the ability to do great things. I really hope in the future to have the opportunity to meet some of you in person. Meanwhile, I sincerely hope that you enjoy this event and most of all, have fun. Thank you.